All right, here we are. Bird of the day with my guest, Nebulux. Hello, and, uh, everybody. Nebulux nice to was meet like, you. I always ask my guests, uh, what kind of uh, birds do you like? What, what would you, you know, to get ideas for bird of the day? And Nebulux said, penguins. Yay. Um, well, I, I regret to inform you that our bird of the day one week ago was the rock hopper penguin. And I ain't going to do Aww, two penguins man. two weeks in a row. <laughs> I'd love That's penguins fine. too. Look, look, penguins. Penguins might be the most universally loved birds on the planet. Everybody, who really? doesn't love a penguin? I mean, right? Right? I, I've never met anybody who's like, nah, I don't like penguins. Penguins suck. Everybody loves penguins. They're just goofy little guys. But last week when we were talking about penguins, we were talking about Argentina because the rockhopper penguin, um, you know, lives in the southern coast of Argentina. And I was like, ooh, rockhopper penguin. They should make that the national bird of Argentina. Well, they didn't. Then make the penguin the Aww. national bird of Argentina. I think they dropped the ball on this one. But I looked up what bird was the national bird of Argentina, and that bird was the Rufus Hornero. And that's our bird of the day today. Look at this little guy. Look at him. He's just a little happy little guy sitting on a branch. He's just a cute he looks very guy. grabbable. Like I could reach out my hand and just like fit it around his body and eat him. I mean, y y y y if you could catch him, yeah, you probably could. <laughs> I was like, my, yeah, it's, yeah, so it's like, it's like this aspect ratio seems off. All right. Oh, like well, this comment. We have brown bird at home. <laughs> we have brown bird at home. Well, yes, these guys are very brown birds. They they are not the most beautiful bird in the world. But they, I think they're cute. I mean, come on, look at that little guy. He's cute. It looks like a toasted marshmallow. Yes! Desire to eat it increases. Oh, gee, please, please don't eat it. <laughs> it's probably protected. Okay. But they are seven to eight inches long with a nine and a half to 10.5 inch wingspan. So if you're wondering, like an American robin, they're about as big as an American robin, weighing about 1.1 to 2.05 ounces. Uh, the males are typically going to be about 10 to 20 percent bigger than the females. So not a lot bigger, but uh, in general they are. And their lifespan is going to be between six to nine years old. Now, of course, you see they are a little perchin bird. Three claws up front, small in the back, little round body. It's, that's your typical bird that makes over half a bird species. So it is, of course, a passiform. Um, in the family Ferranidae, the Ferranius rufus. I don't know too, too much about that family. Cute little songbird is really all you can say. Now, as you see there, they live, you know, primarily in like Brazil and uh, Bolivia and that country that's south of Bolivia. What's that country there? Is that Peru? I think that might be Peru. No, wait, that's not, wait, no, Peru's on the I know Peru's question. in South America somewhere. Well, this is South, I mean, South, God, I don't know my South American geography <laughs> that well. What country is that? I know Brazil's the big one. Yeah, everyone knows Brazil. And Chile exists. Yeah, Chile is that very thin strip country on the mm. uh, on the west coast there. Oh, the one that's um, hogging all the beaches. And then Argentina is the slightly bigger one to the right of that. So as you can see, they do they do uh, occupy a pretty good uh, segment of uh, oh Paraguay. That little small country between Argentina that's totally covered in green, that's Paraguay. And then the really small country south of Brazil is Uruguay. Yes. Oh. But I was right that Bolivia was the one on the upper left. And yes, Peru is uh, to, the, to the left there. That's it. That's our South American geography lesson for today. Yay. Yes. But yeah, I suppose if you go to Rio de Janeiro, you might see a few of these guys flying around. Quite possible. But yeah, uh, even though they're only in about half of Argentina, Argentina decided to make it the uh, national bird. Of course, Buenos Aires, the capital, is within that green region. So so there you go. There you go. Uh, what I think the coolest thing about these birds is their nests. Now look at that nest. That ain't a collection of sticks. That's a little mud hut. Uh, and they, these huts are a mix of small grasses and twigs and packed mud. And, uh, the thing is, is that these will become almost entirely enclosed. So this one's under construction. As you can see, they work as pairs to make these. The males and the females are like, let's build a beautiful home together. And then, so you can see here, these two are working together to make themselves a nice little nest. 
And uh, the nickname for their family, of the family of birds they're in, are called oven birds. And because their nests end up working like little ovens. So, you know, they will lay on their eggs to incubate them. But these nests actually contain and hold heat, and they're very warm inside. So they can actually leave their eggs unincubated for a little bit, and the construction of the nests will actually keep those eggs warm. So they don't need to have a parent constantly sitting on them. They just need these little hot little ovens to keep the eggs nice and toasty warm at all times. Really kind of brilliant. But the other benefit of it is that it's uh, more enclosed, so it also protects it from predators. So pretty uh, pretty clever nest building there. And they're just so cool. I mean, they almost kind of look like a hornet's nest, don't they, or something? Like almost like a big insect nest. But no, it's these, these birds making these cool little mud ovens. Very cool. Very cool. Um, Very adorable. Yeah. And the mating pairs, um, they will usually stick together for a few years, and sometimes they do mate for life. Um, it's it's not super well known, but they have seen, like, you know, a banded one will be, like, a different one from year to year or something. But they have also... So it's like, sometimes they mate for life, sometimes they don't. So I guess they're about as monogamous as humans. You know, some of them stick together for life. Some of them get divorces and start a family with someone else. It happens. <laughs> but uh, when the eggs are laid, both parents will trade off doing the incubating. Although usually the female will do most of the incubation during the day. And then they trade off at night. Um, but once the babies are born, both parents are going to go grab food and bring it back for the little ones. So we got good dads. Good dads, good moms. They're very good. And then each uh, season, they're going to have two to four eggs per clutch. Usually only one clutch, but sometimes they'll have a second one. And uh, the young will typically stay with their parents until they're about a year old. In which case, they'll go off and try and find their own mate. But uh, yeah, they'll hang out with their parents through the uh, winter season, which, you know, since it's the Southern Hemisphere, that's going to be... So they do most of their breeding starting in like November, December. And then their wintering season is going to be, you know... Well, now. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Argentina doesn't get quite as cold and snowy, especially in northern Argentina and Brazil, where these guys live. They don't really have to deal with harsh winters, so they don't migrate. They are a non-migratory bird. They, they tend to stay pretty close put and leave their parents once they're like, they're like, honey, you've been with us for a whole year. You've grown up. It's time for you to go find a nice mate. I think that's what happens. Button bird. Sounds talk. about right. We got a video. Oh, a video. Nice. Yeah, I like videos. So, uh, here they are walking on the ground. Aww. Grabbing mud. Like I said, they like to grab mud for their nest. So this guy's good here grabbing materials. Muddy, muddy little strings of grass. Such a cute little guy. And it's uh, it's kind of hard to tell the difference. I can't tell if this is a male or a female because their their coloring is very slightly different. But you really have to have a trained eye to know the difference. And my eye is not trained on it. But as you can see here, here's here's them just adding little bits of mud to their nest. It's really quite fascinating how they do this. I mean, they're making a strong clay. Thing and they're not they don't even have a kiln. They don't even have a kiln. Hey, bird, there's some tasty snacks crawling along the uh why don't you eat some of them ants? It's a tasty snack for you. <laughs> this is real busy. It's it's focused on its yeah. job. It'll take its lunch break after two hours. I mean I just I just think it's so cool how birds will just become so focused on building something and how good they are at it. And how elaborate some of these things are. It's just so cool. Yes, um, I was saying tasty snacks because these birds primarily eat insects. They are insectivorous. They will occasionally eat like seeds and nuts and stuff, but their primary diet is bugs. You know, be it spiders or ants or beetles or, you know, whatever little bugs they can grab their uh, little beaks around. That's what they're going to go for. Uh, and being up in the tree like that, yeah, sometimes the food comes to them. Another interesting thing about it is that uh, there's a lot of species of bird where really only the males are vocal. 
but both the males and the females of the uh, Rufus Horneo are uh, quite vocal. They will chatter and chirp and, you know, they're not exactly sure it, all of it. I mean, obviously some of it is a uh, warning of predators nearby, maybe telling of food things, but they do have, they do have, you know, some complex songs and stuff. Not as complex as other birds, but, you know, they're pretty good at it. They're pretty good. They are chatty little birds. They're not the best flyers in the world, though. They, uh, their wings really aren't that big compared to their body size. So they use flight mostly to get up into trees or to go from tree to tree. But they're not going to do any long distance flying. They're not going to, like, fly for miles at a time or anything like that. A um, few hundred yards, really, at most. They prefer to spend a lot of their time right on the ground. They, they like to, you know, hop around, find their mud, find their bugs. You know, when they're scavenging for bugs, being on the ground. Being on the ground is good. Hello, buddy style. Welcome. Welcome. Hello, hello. Uh, hello. Um, but yeah, and oftentimes, so they will nest up in tall trees and put their, uh, you know, build up their nests up there. But once the babies are gone... They don't roost up there. And of course, you know, if you know Harvest Twig Facts, you know the difference between a nest and a roost. Nests are for laying eggs and raising babies. Roosts are where they sleep at night. And oftentimes, those are the same place. But these guys prefer to roost in the ground among very tall, like, reeds. So they, like, hide themselves in grass and stuff like that. And will sleep down on the ground rather than uh, being, up in their, being up in their nest. So I think that's kind of neat. Seems a little dangerous, but uh, hey, seems to work out good for them. Now, um, one of the reasons, like, you know, that they became the national bird of both Argentina and Uruguay. Yes, Uruguay, which we were talking about a little there. Um, is because they are considered an omen of good fortune. Uh, it's one of those birds where, like, you know, a lot of cultures have seen, seen them and like, hey, that, that bird is, you see that bird in the morning, that means you're going to have a good day. And I can see why, you know, he's a good, happy little bird. How could you how could you not see a happy little bird like this and be like, I'm going to have a good day. I'm gonna have a good day. And I am also happy to report that their numbers are pretty stable. They are not seeing decline in uh, numbers at all. Therefore, on the endangered species list, they are a species of least concern. So we always love to see right. that. We always yeah. love to see animals that are... I mean, obviously, they face the same threats as, well, every other animal on the planet, but they seem to be adapting pretty well. Uh, I'd say the biggest threat to them is probably overuses of pesticides, which kill off their food. Pesticides are real bad for birds, folks. Yeah, it kills the bugs, but it's not good for the birds. It's not good for the birds. But yeah, my thoughts, up until a week ago, I had never even heard of this bird, but I was uh, pretty happy to learn about them. Their their nests are especially just so cool. And, you know, yeah, like you said, they're like toasted little marshmallows. They're, they're pretty <laughs> cute. So now that I've taught a little bit of Nebula, what, what do you think? What do you think about them? What do you got to, got to say? Oh, uh, I mean, I think the oven bird ankle is really cool. Like how, how their little nests retain heat for the eggs even if the parents aren't there mm -hmm. i thought that was pretty cool uh Sorry. i thought it was cool how they tag team taking care of the the, the eggs mm -hmm. yeah it's and again toasted marshmallows very grappable yeah <laughs> a high tier bird yeah i mean look i got a soft spot for all <laughs> cute little passerines you know and they're not I they're, what go ahead go ahead go ahead well, i was just saying it's just like they're not like gross dirty water birds you know, like petrels or gulls. <laughs> They're just cute little guys doing their thing. Not related to the bird, but your presentation of the bird of the day, like, that was way more in-depth than I had expected. I've learned so much about this bird. I'd well, be able to repeat facts to people. <laughs> you've, you've, in, you've uh, what is it? Impressed it upon my memory. Well, this is like Bird well, of the well Day uh, 190. So if you want to learn about more birds, heck out, check on over the uh, to the Corvus Twig YouTube channel. Or if you are watching on the U Corvus Twig YouTube channel, hit like and subscribe because we'd love to have these videos. Get, but yeah, you want to learn about birds? I've done almost 200 birds <laughs> in <laughs> presentations just like this one. Yeah, we're that's right, Hasio. We're getting real close to 200, and I'm almost wondering if I might be able to time it really close that my three-year anniversary stream might be Bird of the Day 200. How cool would that Ooh, be? Nice. 
Yes. Um, ah, oh, some good bird facts here. Oh, we got some good bird facts. We got all the best bird facts. Although, just be just be warned, like, the first 50 or so aren't as good. You know, I hadn't quite, you know, I had to get in my stride a little bit. You know, it's, it's, it's evolved over the years. Oh, okay. Yeah, I do have enough for syndication. God, that's right. God, God, how many hours worth of bird of the days have you done now? It's just like, have I done as much as Breaking Bad? I don't know. My episodes <laughs> are shorter. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to call this make bird a of YouTube the day series about them. Just like take the clips of all the bird of the days. Oh, wait, is that what you're saying you yeah, do have? Yeah, no, I, I have a playlist oh. on YouTube of every bird of the nice. day. You can just do the playlist and go. Yeah, uh, I actually haven't done the rock pigeon yet, um, but I'm kind of holding it. There's a special guest who's a podcaster who did a story about rock pigeons, and I'm waiting for him to come on. And I'm saving Bird of the Day for when he comes on. So, I know. It's unbelievable. You're like, you haven't done rock pigeons yet? Nope. Haven't done cockatoos yet? I mean, I haven't done... There's some There's some pretty... Uh, I haven't done the ibis yet. The trashiest bird in all of Australia. I have still not done yet. So, there's some... Look, you can't do big name birds that everybody knows every week. Sometimes you have to do the Rufus Hornero. And look... We learned about a bird that nobody's heard of, at least, you know, outside of Argentina and Brazil and Uruguay. But yeah, and now we know about it. Just and now we your know bird. That's what, oh, yeah, I did the kookaburra. Wait. No, I haven't done the kookaburra. I haven't done the kookaburra. I got I to gotta do I got I, I, I got gotta to do the kookaburra soon. But for now, we got to get back to the studio. We got more stuff to do. We got more Sunday dusk.